What's up, Brunel? This is Bruce from Printava. We are today in Los Angeles, California, over with Max Hellman. And we got Nikki Martin from Printava hanging out with us too at their shop, Family Industries. Super excited for this shop tour. Probably one of the nicest shops we've ever seen. Let's take a look. <music> Max, thanks for letting us hang out and be able to show us your pad. Welcome, welcome to the, to the new space. You were here when it's being built, so let's go. Let's go yeah, we haven't been able to do an official video yeah, yet. Let's go. On top of that, I also drove accidentally, as long as Nick did too, to the old space. <laughs> it is still Apple Maps' default. Well, we, we still have our fulfillment stuff and, and poster printing and a couple other things. Oh, there, so. gotcha. Maybe I, I updated the uh, the Google Maps, but you know, yeah, Apple the Google Maps, Maps came. Slow, I guess to uh, figure that out. So who knows? Um, this is a parking lot that LA City made us replace. Uh, Thank you, LA City. Yeah, that drains water. Even though there's a freeway right there that drains water into the street, that we had to. <laughs> our COVID check-in station. Oh God. <laughs> You're fired. You're That's not the okay. COVID checker. <laughs> Let's see. 101. Oh, he's, he's safe. 97.7. Uh oh. Oh shit. <laughs> 99. Somebody I know is vaccinated though. So, uh, <laughs> This is the, the new space. It's, uh, it's a little bit crowded in here right now because we're doing a bunch of fulfillment in our, what would our, usually be our live section where we put together live kits and whatnot, but um, we're doing a bunch of swag boxes for different companies, so we've got that going on right here. Uh, a couple hundred ring lights that are sitting up on racks and whatnot right now, so um, yeah, this is the, the fulfillment area. Um, more now and we have fulfillment happening at other space as well but this is the stuff that kind of comes in and goes out within a couple of days so when stuff's printing do you ship it over to that facility too or is that for more yeah we'll go over there we'll take we'll take print stuff over there if we need to uh more long-term storage on gotcha. that end and then this is stuff that will come in uh we're packing swag boxes stuff gets put in there and then i'll ship out as we, uh, as we go yeah all that live stuff down in a while. You guys, we if you guys haven't seen, they did the how to get started in live stream printing at the Pronouncers Conf, which we'll link down below. But these guys are live printing masterminds. We try, but now <laughs> it's, been, it's been a while. It's been a while, you know. Would you say it was a heavy pivot then to fulfillment? Or was it all that live work you filled up with? Yeah, it, it, was, a, it was a good way to fill the, the void of it. Um, we were kind of already doing it, so it was a, like a, a natural next step within our, you know, our business model, uh, and you know, combining it with virtual events and whatnot, it was a it was a way to kind of like take what live had and like use some of the same same staff and same systems that we had in place. Gotcha. So a few press the stations over there. Um, the one thing that we tried to do at the shop here was make everything modular, so. Every, every table is on wheels, so we can actually structure how the shop is set up to move depending upon what the workload is. Uh, so tables can kind of go different places. Uh, key presses can be pulled in and out really easily. Uh, and uh, it makes things easy on that end of things. Cold brew and coffee, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the donuts. For sure. Uh, shipping, receiving. You know, staging, all that kind of stuff is happening over here right now. Uh, 
Is this a busy time for you for fulfillment or is this pretty regular? Um, just in terms of space usage? Or? It's, it's, it's been busy with fulfillment. It's been busy for sure. Oh, hey, look who's here. Whoa, the other half of family industry. Okay. What's up, How dude? You doing? Hey, man, I'm Nick. Nice to meet you, man. Good to meet you, dude. I thought that was a uh, little tape measure in your back pocket. <laughs> oh no, it's just some bubble water. <laughs> uh, we got uh, yeah, shipping and receiving is over here. Lots of stuff. You know, we're generally pretty pretty fast on the turnaround right now, so kind of got a flow that works within everything. And got it. Right so it comes there. in. Everything's being counted. You're saying over here? Yeah, uh, counter gets over here. Oh. Gets in the space. And then it gets taken. In. Uh, on these tables or just out of the box? They just um, usually we'll put it on the table. There's a table over there. They'll put it on, and then it gets staged on carts, and then we kind of go in and out. Uh, and then uh, goes in kind of around the, uh, the space. Got it. Lots of hang downs. How do you determine what to? Uh, oh, smart. How do you determine what that goes to the other warehouse and managing both of those? Um, if it's a long-term fulfillment client, so if it's like, if we have an order and then we have to keep a couple thousand items on the shelves or something like that, it goes over to the other space. Okay. Um, if it's something that is quick turnaround, like somebody needs it to be fulfilled to 1,500 different, uh, you know, influencers or creators or to uh, partner brands or something like that, uh, but it needs to come here, we'll, fill it out here and then we'll ship it out. Got so it. if it's being shelved, it goes to the other space. If it's going out, it stays. Got it. So this is all the new the new building that we built that we're in right now. And then where the presses are, that was the existing uh, space already. So. Yeah, this is a massive investment. This is, I mean, this is incredible. And so you own everything now. Yeah. So what was the thoughts behind Leasing another space as maybe you grow out of it and keep moving versus buying and building out. Um, LA has, uh, I don't know, I just feel like for the long run, for kind of retirement and things like that, real estate's a good play, especially in this city. Um, I mean, the value of that is better for us than uh, leasing. You can you can set up an LLC to pay. Like our, rent. Our, yeah, we we rent. You're able to depreciate that versus your business paying into that, um, and you set a market rate for the payment for what you you know what the rent is, sure. and then so our business pays into that rent. And there's a lot of like different tax loopholes. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So that's that's what we figured. Um, and you know we're we're at a point now where like our print business like we don't really want it to be like this gigantic you know multi press you know what we have um, we have partners you know I don't think people are afraid to outsource any things outside of the the box of what we do um, but we have our system in place and it's pretty good are you gonna measure me I oh there's three. a tape measure yeah we have a little th we have a little theory going on oh. The, dry, the dryer temperature is uneven on the two sides, so we're trying to figure oh, that out. Oh, you think it's the height? Uneven. Uneven. Solved. Look at that, problem solver right there. Add <laughs> watch if you want. So yeah, this is this is the existing building that was here. So there was a garage that actually... Oh, got it. You could see the seam. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, so we got both... We got the presses over here. Uh, the, the bigger one over here, the smaller one right over here. Uh, we can go back around over there if we want. To yeah, yeah, let's go take a look. Got a nice arm. We always get asked about these iPad arms. Now it's bottom. Uh, this is Mike. He's a hey, Mike. Is this all ink mixing here? Yeah. And you do custom colors as well, or yeah. just the standard? We have, we have standard, we do custom, but we, we try to do standard. Uh, got the motor collar, the uh, screen coder, the Spider 3, and then uh, the Deluxe stand up. This is awesome, by the way. It's pretty nice, yeah, because it takes up a lot less room than you know, 
a, a, a typical right. in it. Um, and uh, we're able to rotate through things really, really quickly and uh, fast turn around time. So what was like, the, I mean, you guys have almost fully automated, I mean, you have fully automated the screen room. Yeah. Um, Where did you start? Was it direct to screen first? Was it was it coder? Was it, it was all of it. Because at oh, our old space, we didn't have power. Because we had uh, the washout booth, and that was it. But if we had more power in here, yeah. we could do it in here. You just bought them all at once. Yeah. You said, I want everything. <laughs> It's worth it's worth the investment because you know with with Jonathan in there he can get so much more done. You just have one person running the whole one thing. person doing the whole the whole thing. Wow. And he can, he's compartmentalized these sections to it, so he's able to get things out sure. without being an issue. You know, if you have one person just spraying screens all day, it doesn't leave him time to code or it doesn't leave him time to burn. Um, He's able to come up with systems to help him move along a little bit more quickly and efficiently, whereas when you're just doing the other stuff, you can't, you sure. can't come up with your own systems in place. So he's done a really good job of, you know, um, tapping into our, uh, you know, Alex set up a whole system to drop files directly to the spider, and he's helped get that in place with Alex and you know pull things. If he has a question, he can relabel things and, and whatnot. So that's that cool. Is, is set up. What still, up? Still working on the ink area. Um, a lot of this stuff was taken over from our other space. Um, Got it. So we've standardized some things, um, but we're really trying to direct people towards, you know, 40 to 60 stock colors, and then charging more for uh, custom pandemics. If it's if it's a higher tier client or somebody we work with a lot, it doesn't really matter. We'll we'll make things for them. Um, but it just keeps things moving a little bit quicker, more quickly on grass and whatnot. So. That makes sense. So what about uh, the? What about power here? I mean, if the building was obviously not a screen printing building before and installing it, building everything out over there. There's 600 amps, three phase. Wow. So there's a lot of power. I can show you the back, the yeah. back room. Oh, this is a nice uh, rack too. Yeah, that's uh, that's movable. Night Owls had that. Ooh, shouts out to Eric yeah. for the we inspo. Saw uh, Mike saw that, our production manager saw it. Nine Owls who had that. Piece. He said he needed one of those, two of those, so. Thanks, thanks Eric. <laughs> yeah, that's very well organized. Whatever you do. Oh, sick. I I'll let it. this door close because you get locked in. So this no, is kind of like a catch-all. You don't let this door close. Uh, but there are a couple of our, uh, our power drops coming from the city over here. Uh, we had to build this right here, which is plants in here, so that the rainwater can come in here and drain through off our roof into this, even though the rainwater is, again, cleaner off of our roof than it is on the freeway right over there, so. City codes. City codes need a garden. Uh, one thing we recommend to people is having, this is the, the compressor unit. We have two, so that if one goes down, you can switch to the other one. They're notorious for going down when you need them most. So having two units is a way to uh, to mitigate any like any issues you have with the compressor unit. So you can just swap the two of them and flip it. So you still have the air going. Hey, and so what a question though. You talk about the rainwater has to go into here. Yeah. Where does it go from here? This drains into the street. Oh. It's got to go through a clean clean. Uh, clean Gotta clean through the. Gotta go through eucalyptus. But first. the crazy thing is that we have a, uh, an AC line which drains completely clean, like the cleanest water possible, and it still has to drain through this and actually gets dirtier going through this. <laughs> <laughs> Rules and regulations. Rules and regulations. Now we may close the door. Do you have anything to say? I'm Alex Miners, and this is Jackass. It'd <laughs> be cool if you went through the dryer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would have fixed the hype problem. Uh, let's go. Uh, this is the alleyway. You can check that out. 
Easier loading than our old spot. Did you have to, so you built the way it is to load in Yeah, here. exactly. Because it was just that building right there. So yeah, so yeah. drop in, drop off, everything here. Uh, that's our, li that was the, the roll up gate for live section. So things seem, you know, you can pull up, bring them in, and you get things in and out. Uh, So it's completely custom. So you worked yeah. with what, like an architecture firm? Yeah, or? we had an architect and then a contractor who, who built the rest of it, so. How long was this whole build out? Two years. And we'll see upstairs too, which I yeah. think is really cool. Two, two years in total. Two full or? Two years, one year of getting through permitting and architectural plans, you have to get everything stamped and like mechanical plumbing, the actual, you know, drawings, everything like that. Uh, and then construction took about a year. I'm not there, so there's always things that will hold you back. Now we're here. So for people that are going through a build out, is it you think two x time and fifty percent more money, or what? What do you think that settles? I would just plan on a little bit longer than you think. So if you think it's going to take a year, plan for a year and a half, um, and then have a little bit of extra budget just in case, because there's going to be things that you want while construction is happening, like maybe adding in more power or more drops or uh, changing the space a little bit if you need to. Uh, so just always have that little bit of extra fun to uh, kind of go through uh, when you're building it out, actually. So. We go upstairs? Let's do it. I think that's maybe one thing that's nice about winter LA is the weather is so nice in this. Or is there AC in here too? Let's say hi to Phil real quick. Phil! <laughs> <laughs> is there AC or is it just like the cool air? Uh, this, go ahead. Thank you though. Uh, this is the cool air in here. We There is an AC, you split AC unit up there and there's an AC in that room. So you can kind of cool it down a little bit as we go. Up the stairs. This is a four hour firewall. <laughs> Just want to make sure LA County knows that. Well, yeah. Showroom is right here. We really haven't had a lot of people come up in here. Uh, once in a while, they can come up and you know get different items, but we'll bring it downstairs. We actually set up a pickup cart down there, so people can drive in pick up their stuff and they don't have to worry about touching, you know, or like being in the same space with us. Sure. Um, so hopefully that changes soon. We can start bringing people back in. Yeah. It's with such a beautiful space too. So, lighting was a big thing for everybody and having lots of natural light. So you don't feel like you're in a dark dungeon. Uh, the desk systems, people can kind of work wherever they want in the space. Like if they're wanting to go up on the counter space or couches and whatnot. That's the booth we're going to lock in over there. <laughs> I love the room booth. <laughs> it's good for calls. Uh, we just got to hop on one real fast with the open office space. Um, right. We contemplated doing, you know, like separate little office spaces, but, you know, it, it, for our business, we've always been in the same room. Um, and it can get entirely distracting when you're sitting trying to get work done. But... I think we like to collaborate and like bounce ideas off of each other a lot. So it'd be hard if it was always in an office space. Uh, so. that, is the, that is the balance of open versus not. Is it's like you, you hear something and it can kind of like throw you off yeah, I mean, pretty it's like easily. People will talk about, you know, like, oh, did you see the game last night? And then that turns into a 30 minute conversation. Right. And then 30 minutes later, you're like, oh, <laughs> get work done. Um, but it also, like, I feel like it lightens up the mood. Mm -hmm. a good amount, so. well, that's part of the culture too, right? Like yeah. it is the investment of um, to hang out. So we just keep like a smaller, uh, a smaller run of, of what we actually offer now uh, on the rack. Uh, a little bit more curated than we had before, just because 
we feel now that we can kind of just guide people towards specific styles versus having people just come in and, and ask. And you know, just browse. Here's like the, the 20 things that we really like and we think print well. Um, so let's choose these and kind of go from there. Everybody's, or so many people are rather wearing family industry shirts. Do you guys try to uh, just like give everybody a swag bag or is he just constantly pumping stuff out? Uh, we just always print different runs and things like that. So, Cause it, it yeah. is interesting, like sure, running a screen printing shop, but I don't see that a lot is where everybody's rocking, you know, the same logo. Yeah, hats and, and things like that. And we'll just get everybody like different items, different parts of the year and kind of people wear them. I'm glad they, you know, I'm glad they do. Uh, the conference room meeting, we have a couple weekly meetings, whether it's sales, uh, you know, social media uh, meeting. Um, we do our uh, our weekly full staff meeting on Mondays. Like that's what everybody's downstairs doing right now. Um, so we kind of just go through the week and kind of what's coming up, just so everybody's on the same page. Mm. Uh, how, how do those old hands meetings go? Like, is it just client related or it's just business? It's just change? a production manager basically saying, okay, here's what we have on the, for on tap for the week. Mm -hmm. um, you know, here's the jobs. We're gonna have uh, some of the guys helping with fulfillment this week or, you know, moving things around, whatever it may be. Like, it's just kind of a general overview of what the week's gonna be. Uh, and then our sales reps will chime in and say, hey, you know, this client needs extra hand holding, or, you know, some of the items are gonna come in later this week, just just to get everybody on the same page because a lot of times the, um, the print staff, they're not in emails or things like that, so they don't really know as much. So it kind of just gives them an insight into what the, the week looks like. Um, and just syncs up, er so everybody in the company is doing it. It's yeah, not just exactly. production. Or so everybody's on that meeting. Um, we have some of our, you know, our tech meetings in here when we're building out apps and things like that. Uh, you know, if that's spitball ideas, you can come in here and, and work. Uh, how do you how do you balance your roles between you and Alex? Um, Alex, you know. At this point, it's more just overseeing the business, I feel like, mm -hmm. for us. Um, tried to step back a little bit from being so hands-on with sales, which is kind of what I did for 10 years. Um, and he still oversees the art department, production department, um, but in, in a role where it's kind of like, if somebody's got an issue, it's kind of overseeing, trying to take on the problem like he did with the, the dryer, oh, you know, it needs to be leveled out. Uh, if, the art, if the art team needs help, you know, with an issue he can take care of that um he's kind of like a good hr guy like he he knows how to talk to the guys when it's like there's an issue that you know comes up that's like a personal issue he can kind of talk them through that stuff um and then i'll do more on like the you know like overseeing the financial side of the business and you know uh if the sales team has questions helping them kind of put things together but kind of stepping back from being like directly involved to the day to day and more on the, the big picture. Sure. And right now Alex and I are, are really like diving into developing uh, the new customization app. So that's like where our focus is more. So we're able to like step aside and go into that role. Are there any key roles or hires, especially with the size team that you're at, that you said, okay, this is something I would have done earlier or we should have brought on somebody earlier to own this to help us let you be able to step back because that's a I mean getting out of especially production and yeah. sales day to day that's a pretty big spec probably step. probably a production manager who knew a little bit more about like the whole process would have been would have been good because we had some home homegrown people who were in the role um, but I don't think it necessarily just because you're a part of the team doesn't necessarily mean you know how to run production I think there's a, a disconnect that like maybe we had said like oh this person is a good printer and Make smart, move out. but it didn't necessarily transfer over to knowing how to manage other people yeah it's a and, totally different role yeah and and mike is like super level-headed and you know he can he can work through stress right you know and there's there's always going to be stress stress with production uh it's a so. uh, yeah you're spot on we, yeah. we talk about that a lot you try to groom and move things up but it's it's like two different job descriptions completely. yeah and and having and phil um for the in-house side of things he's He's like taking on management of just the, the operations of the business. Like, and that's a flip side of it then. That's the amazing. growing up into yeah, it. Yeah, and it's just like, it frees us up to kind of like, okay, cool. Now we don't have to worry about every single thing coming sure. through. Um, you know, running the meetings in the morning. I feel like as an owner, 
you want to be there to help like steer it, mm -hmm. but giving them the autonomy to Actually, actually you, run it i feel sure. like it makes it feel like it's it's their shop and not just our shop so i'm very curious then with with phil was he saying hey i'm open to this or is like you saying hey do you want to try to take on that he just he's taken it on i mean he's, he's 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 done it and same you know goes with adam so he um, showed the initiative that yeah, hey, i want to you know it. adam and and it, people who take the initiative and say hey this is the this is what i'm gonna try out will always be open to it you know put together a plan show us how it would work and we're happy to, to implement it you know systems i think like it's huge you know and like for so long we were coming up with the systems and like trying to implement them so when somebody else can come up with systems and it saves us from having to always think about that kind of stuff that's i think that's huge got it so uh so you know we've it's it's been a different like definitely like a weird year uh, our in-house sales last year were actually up from 2020 in-house sales were up from 2019 in-house sales. So that was a, an area of growth for us, obviously not having live. Mm -hmm. It's a big portion of the business. So that was down. Uh, we were able to make some of the, some of that up with fulfillment, virtual event customization, things like that. So uh, year on year it was down, but it wasn't down. Not that much actually, which was good. It's awesome. Yeah. It's just awesome how you pivoted yeah. so strongly from that. It makes sense. And then, Bathrooms, we got the gym over there. You can go look. I know you looked at our other gym space at the other shop. This is, this is, ex this is like Equinox. It's a nice gym, man. <laughs> so is this just like a team perk or is this for Yeah, anybody, you guys? anybody can come use it. I'll usually use it at lunch and then a couple of other guys will use it earlier in the day or sometimes on the weekends or something like that. We'll come over here and, and test it out. So, you know, if you want to use the gym, you can. That's awesome. Yeah. It's for people's minds to stay active. Right. There's a bike, there's like a huge bike path like along the river, which is just like a block and a half away over there. So I think once people are a little more comfortable of being out about, like you can ride to tons of restaurants. You can ride a couple miles up to Burbank. That way you can ride uh, down to, um, you know, some restaurants on the other way as well. So it's nice. Such a beautiful space. What, what do you think is just next for I was just showing, I was just saying, it looks like out of office spaces or people are flexible working at home or like, what do you yeah. think is next to be able to mold this for your team? I don't know. It's tough to say because we've now, we've been in here a little less than a year mm -hmm. and we haven't even been able to utilize the space fully with people with masks and things like that. It's like, I always envision like, oh, we've got meetings, like we'll have like lunches where we sit up here. Uh, we haven't even been able to do that, you know? Right. Kind of just one of those things that's... Once I feel like that kind of comes back, we're able to just like congregate a little more. It'll be easier to, to kind of see how things go. Colorful, you know, different like murals and art pieces and posters we printed over the years. What's that? Who made the mural? Uh, my wife's mural company did that one. She did the, the mural that's out there as well. This has been a really great tour from Max Hellman and Alex Miners of their shop Family Industries in Los Angeles, California. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. We'll see you guys on the next shop tour.